Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be together. Um, so please, um, let, is, did it advance properly? It just says welcome to worship right now. Not it's not, it's not moving when I. No, we're just seeing, yeah, the, still the prelude screen. Okay. So I will try sharing screen again. How about now? Okay, I'm good. All right. We come to worship today. Some come seeking, some come struggling. Lord, be with each one of us today. Feed our hearts and souls with your transforming love. God is with us today, guiding, lifting, feeding, restoring our souls. Praise be to God who continually abides with us. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, our defender, storms range around us and within us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue people from despair, deliver your children from fear, and preserve us in the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from uh, First Kings uh, chapter 19, verses 9 through 18. On Mount Horeb, where God had appeared to Moses with typical signs of God's presence, earthquake, wind, and fire, Elijah now experienced God in sheer silence. God assured Elijah that he is not only the faithful, not the only faithful believer, 7,000 Israelites are still loyal. God instructed Elijah to anoint two men as kings and to anoint Elisha as his own successor. At Horeb, the, the Mount of God, Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, what are, you, what are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. <clears throat> then the Lord said to him, go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus, when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. Also, you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king over Israel. And you shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel-Meholah, as prophet in your place. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazael, Jehu shall kill. And whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elisha shall kill. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. I reflected on that verse a little bit and I wanted to um, just share some thoughts. We often, I think, expect God to do big things. We know in the Old Testament, God parts the Red Sea and the Israelites walk through. God creates commandments on tablets of stone. God likes big events. It's kind of what we think in our mind. But in this story, the big event, the rushing wind, and the earthquake, and the fire are not where Elisha feels God's presence. Instead, it's in the silence. And silence can sometimes be uncomfortable. But in the silent moment, God comes and speaks to Elisha and gives him hope for what is to come. And I think today, I often forget to wait for those silent moments, just like God's people might have done in Bible times, that I'm always looking for the big message, the billboard, the bright, splashy event. And I need to remember to just allow quiet in my life so that there are moments where I can maybe hear that voice of God speaking to me. So I pray for all of us this week that we look for those God moments, those perhaps splashy, but more likely quiet times when God is speaking to us through someone or through some action and helping us to see what's next, where we're going, and what the plan is for our lives. 
Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your presence, the powerful presence that we know you as creator and the quiet presence that we know you as sustainer. Please guide us this week. Help us to hear your voice. In your name we pray. Amen. Today's psalm comes from Psalm 85, verses 8 through 13, and we will read it responsibly. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying, for you speak peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Truly, your salvation is very near to those who fear you, that your glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Faithfulness shall spring up from the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our righteousness shall go before the Lord, and shall prepare for God a pathway. Second, excuse me, the next reading comes from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 through 15. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, Do not say in your heart, Who will ascend into heaven? That is, to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the abyss? That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if, because if we, you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have not heard? And how are, are they to hear without someone to proclaim him? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side of the Sea of Galilee while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends in Christ, 
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much again for having me here with you today. I'm grateful to Pastor Lysk for allowing me to come and share worship with you and share this message with you. Um, and I'm grateful to you for welcoming me. Um, so thank you for having me. It's good to be together. When I read this story, when I read a lot of stories in the Bible, I often think how far my experience is from the people in them. I have never been in an open boat for more than a few hours. I've never, I've certainly never been in an open boat overnight. Um, and I've certainly never been in an open boat overnight when there was any kind of a wind going or any kind of a sea going. Um, you know, I've never had the ex an experience anything like what the disciples went through overnight with the wind against them, battered by the waves. Um, but I imagine it was a long, long night. They had been with Jesus as he had fed 5,000 5, men. I think we should stop calling it the feeding of the 5,000. It was probably more like the feeding of 20,000 or so. Feeding of thousands of people uh, from five loaves and two fish. And then Jesus had sent them off while he dismissed the crowds, spent some time saying goodbye to them, I suppose, sort of the ancient equivalent of the of the line after church to greet the greet the preacher um and then so they're off in the boat jesus is saying goodbye to all these people he's just fed and then he goes up onto a mountain by himself to pray self-care is important remember that so the disciples are in the boat and they can't have imagined it would have been a very difficult journey um several of them are fishermen i imagine they knew their way around a boat, around the lake. Um, the Sea of Galilee is not is big, but it's not that big. It's about eight miles by 13 miles. It's, it's nothing huge. And it's not like I have some kind of, I don't even know whether they would have been rowing or sailing. And I don't even know, um, you know how fast you could expect a, a Galilean fishing boat to move in that day and age, but I don't think it should have been a journey of any more than a few hours. But they were out there all night. I bet they were seasick. I bet they were soaked. I bet they were exhausted. And I bet they were terrified. And I bet they wished Jesus were there. Again, several of them were fishermen and probably knew how to handle a boat better than some carpenter from Nazareth, which is miles away from, from the sea. Um, but still, they probably remembered how Jesus had been napping with them in a boat in a storm um, a few chapters ago and <clears throat> probably wished that he were there again to wake up and say, peace, be still and make the storm go away. But he wasn't. As far as they could tell, they were on their own. And then they saw him walking toward them on the water. And I think it's perfectly understandable. I, I think they were probably already terrified from their ordeal. And I imagine they were probably even more terrified seeing their teacher, their rabbi, walking on the water toward them. And they said, I think what any of us would say, it's a ghost. And what did Jesus respond? He said, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. Now, our translation gives us, it is I. But the Greek only has two words. Um, it doesn't, the Greek doesn't need the, um, the pronoun it there. Um, the Greek can just use a noun and a verb in that situation. So what Jesus actually says in the Greek is simply, I am, take heart, I am, do not be afraid. 
And now if you remember, if you think back to when God appeared to Moses in the burning bush, what did God say to Moses then? Many things, of course. But Moses asked, well, what name should I what what name should I give them when they ask me, what is the name of this God who has spoken to, to me? Uh, God said, I am who I am. I will be who I will be. Tell them that I am has sent you to them. And that's what Jesus said. Take heart. I am. Do not be afraid. Jesus identified himself with God. Jesus identified himself as God in saying this. And so Peter there in the boat, again, soaked, seasick, exhausted, terrified, cried out, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, what should we make of that? There are several possible ways we could take it. And one way that some Christian interpreters have taken it is that Peter was putting Jesus to the test there. If you remember back to when Satan tempts Jesus, one of the temptations is that he takes Jesus up to the pinnacle of the temple and says, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will give his angels command, he will, I just want, he will command his, he will command his angels concerning you, and they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus responded, of course, it is also written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So is that what's, what Peter's doing here? Is he seeing Jesus and saying, I bet Jesus can't make me walk on water. Let's see if he can do that. Let's see if he'll do that for me. And that's one way that some people have taken this passage. And I, but I don't think that's right. Um, the interpretation that I read in, in the commentary that I looked at noticed what exactly does Peter say? Peter does not say, hey, Jesus, if it's you, make me walk on water. No. No, what Peter says is, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. Because Peter, for all his faults, for all his fear and his doubt and his weakness, for all his faults, Peter knew who Jesus was, and Peter knew what he, Peter, needed. And that was to be with Jesus. And so Peter asked just the right question in that moment, made just the right request. Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water, because I need you, Lord, and I want to be with you. And so Jesus said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and onto the surface of the water and began to walk toward Jesus. And for a moment, he actually did walk on the water as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on that water. But then what happened? He began to see the wind and the waves. And he looked away from Jesus and he was afraid and he began to sink. But all was not lost even then. Because Peter, for all his faults, and for all his weakness and for all his fear, still knew who Jesus is and still knew what he, Peter, needed. And so he cried out, Lord, save me. And Jesus caught him by the hand and pulled him up. And they got into the boat together. It's been, I think, over these past few months, 
something like a long, difficult, seemingly fruitless boat journey. We're stuck inside in these little, in our, in our little rooms, we can think of them as a boat if we want, with a future uncertain, and we never seem to get anywhere. This trip that should have just taken us a couple months should have been pleasant. Heck, in March, I remember thinking to myself, oh, you mean I am supposed to stay inside and not go out and do things and just kind of sit in my room and be cozy and, and read? Oh, well, great. That's awesome. I love that. No more social expectations. Just enjoy my, my quiet time and my privacy. And now, it's August, and I really don't feel that way anymore. I don't think any of us realized back in February and March what we were in for. I remember how people were talking about, yeah, gosh, it's going to be it's going to be May before we get before we get out. Memorial Day is going to feel so good when we finally get there. And here we are. And it's still going. And I think about other journeys that we are on as a nation, as a people. If you lived through the second half of the 20th century, I was born in 1986, so I didn't live through a lot of the events that I'm thinking of. But if you um, were alive during the 1960s and the civil rights movement and the passage of the Civil Rights Act and the March on Washington and the I Have a Dream speech. And you saw all the progress that we made in those days, all the wonderful things that happened. Maybe you thought, oh, we're, we're finally getting there. We're finally arriving as a country to a better place. And I think we got somewhere, but clearly we're still in a boat, still in a storm, and haven't arrived at our destination yet, as we have had, re had to realize. If we didn't realize already, we certainly have had it pointed to, out to us in the past few months that this country has not reached a state of justice, that this country is not the promised land for everyone who lives in it, that we still struggle with the collective sins of racism and injustice. So, in the midst of that, as we look around and we see this pandemic continuing to rage, and as we see the forces of injustice and of racism continuing to rage, I'm frightened, to be honest. Certainly I'm distressed. I don't know how you all feel, but you probably have some negative feelings about it. And that's understandable, that's okay. But the good news is that Jesus can walk on water and Jesus can walk through this pandemic and through the turmoil that our country is in and bring us to the other side. And like Peter, we know who Jesus is and we know that we need Jesus and so we can say with Peter, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you. And then we can come. And we can say, Lord, save me. And stretch out our hand. And Jesus is there to take our hand and take us with him. Thanks be to God. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. For your whole church throughout the world, give courage in the midst of storms so that we may see and hear Jesus' calling. Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. May we follow Christ wherever he leads. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the well-being of your creation, protect waterways, forests, lands, and wildlife from exploitation and abuse. Help the human family endeavor to sustain and be sustained by the resources of your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. The nations and their leaders, in your steadfast 
love and faithfulness meet and the righteousness of unfortunately i've got peace kiss may nations in conflict know the peace that is the fruit of justice and the justice that is the path to peace lord in your mercy hear our prayer For those in need, accompany all those who are lonely and hear the voices of those who cry out in anguish and support those who are frustrated in their search for an affordable place to live. We pray for those suffering today. We offer prayers today for Wally and Courtney as they continue to battle cancer for Jenny S. as she has her chemo treatments. We offer prayers for Denise, who's mourning the loss of her beloved dog, Lexi. For the Calhouns, as they mourn the loss of Bob to cancer. We offer prayers for Kim in Leesburg, as she mourns the loss of her son. And for Jack Todd, Kara Reed's uncle, who continues to recover at UVA after surgery for a brain bleed. We offer prayers for everyone continuing to struggle with the health and economic impacts of the pandemic. And offer healing prayers for Deb Parker, Dave and Barb Rogers, Joan Fowler, Ron Debnan, Sue Okobo, Inez Mindtree, Kathy Poole, Eric Vanderpool, and all those whose family and friends and strangers are in need of comfort and healing. We offer prayers for neighbors Jen and Sharon who are dealing and battling cancer and prayers for family friend Ann Noon who is recovering from a stroke. For all those still suffering from the aftermath of the storms this week, including many other members of my family in Connecticut, many of whom have been without power since Tuesday. We offer prayers for Parbury, caregiver for her mom, for our congregation member's nephew facing a biopsy of his spleen this week, for Linda Bosch and her family as she battles brain cancer, and for students returning to college, for George E., whose cancer has returned, and for Jennifer S., recovering from appendix surgery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For Good Shepherd, you have gathered us here today as your people, and we thank you for this gift. So supply us generously with your grace for our life together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our ministry continues and uh, we welcome your gifts of support to that end. Uh, we're still getting mail at the church and the QR code is on the screen, will continue to be on the screen um, to our online giving site during the offertory music and I will also place the URL in the chat. So uh, let me share the offering music. Played by our organist, Rhonda Rose.
Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens, water and word, wine and bread. These are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Please prepare to share in communion, um, gather together um, the food and drink you are using, the bread and wine or grape juice. We gather now as one body joined around the table. Here we celebrate God's presence among us, united in Christ's spirit, broken and whole all at once. Nourished and hungry, loved and loving, sinner and forgiven, we make one circle of knowing, believing, rejoicing, being, as God lights and rests among us. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall never hunger, and you who believe in me shall never thirst. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember Jesus' presence with us. Let us pray the prayer that, that Jesus taught his followers. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness, been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 